guys notice the, the eastern daylight and the central daylight on there? When mm -hmm. you're planning a trip, it's important to understand what time it is where you're leaving from and what time it is where you're arriving to. Yeah, I think that's Iowa. No, so, um, I'll I'll Iowa. Iowa. I just Eastern place, uh, uh, Methodist Church. Is it, I so that's day one. So whoever is in charge of our sightseeing and figuring out what there is to go see along the way needs to understand that and know the route between here and Des Moines and see if there's anything cool. That's great and just... Remind the world of big ball flying. That is something to say. Okay. Day two. Completely uh, July 18th, Saturday, uh, 7 a.m. We depart from the Des Moines, Iowa. And then at six, Iowa. And at 6 p.m., um, MDT, um, we arrive at Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we spend the night at uh, Grace United Methodist Church. Uh, it'll take nine and a half hours to get there. How many miles? 525. Wow. Uh, day 3, July 19th. Uh, we depart from Cheyenne, Wyoming, and arrive at camp at 1 o'clock p.m. Um, it'll take two hours to get there. It's a 60-mile drive. Uh, day three, uh, it is day three Saturday and Sunday and Saturday, uh, we're at Vendell and Tour Scout Ranch. Um, Day 9, July 25th, Saturday, at 7 a.m., uh, MDT. Okay, wait, what? Day 3, it says arrive at camp. And we'll have the elk one bunch. And then day 3, day 9, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, they're all right next to each other. Yeah. Um, so day 3 through 9, we're at camp doing yeah, that. At, yeah, okay. Um, day 9, uh, we depart from camp at 7 a.m. Uh, we arrive at Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa at 9 p.m. and we spend the night at Eastern Place United Methodist Church. Uh, day 10, uh, July 26th at 7 a.m. we depart from the place in Idaho. Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, Iowa. 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 <laughs> um, and at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we arrive at Columbus and we're back. That's really good. That's the reason I thought your French is still working over. It's still not there. <laughs> so, that is the rough outline of your trip. How many miles is that in all? A lot. <laughs> well, yeah. 500 and something every day, so you figure. About like yeah, it's pretty close to 1,100 miles out and 1,100 miles back. It's like a little bit more than a thousand. Okay, next thing on our agenda is travel planning. Here we have a new travel planning flyer. This is our van travel checklist. I would like everybody to take one and pass one along. And we will oh, you do it. Is that the same one from last year? Or is it similar? Upgrade? Similar. Similar. Does it allow more equipment or less? It's, it's the same. It's just a little more refined and we'll go over it. Okay. Did your dad go on last trip? No. 
Okay, I'll email everybody one of these. You guys need to use this checklist. I'm a huge fan of checklists. I use checklists for everything important that I do. So, the first thing to make travel real easy is everything. All of your stuff needs to be packed in something. No loose stuff. You know, because if we have a back of a van and we've got 16 people and here's a water bottle and there's a shoe and there's a roll of socks and there's somebody's wallet, you can't just have a big dumpster full of stuff. So make sure that your stuff is packed in something. And everybody should plan on bringing four pieces of luggage. And they're listed there. Number one is your backpack. Now your backpack ought to be all packed, ready to go to camp, and pretend you're going to zip tie it shut and never see it again until we get to camp. Because our intention is we put the packs in the van, they go on the bottom, and we don't ever take them out. So if there is something that you absolutely have to have, in the church, that goes in item two, that goes in your travel duffel. That'd be deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush. And now for uh, toiletries like that, I recommend having two sets. Have one in your backpack, yeah, packed, ready to go to camp, and have another one in a Ziploc bag or something to take in your travel duffel. That's what I do. That way my backpack one is all packed, and I don't have to fuss with my backpack either at the church or when I get to camp or anything. Out of curiosity, is there a specific list for the backpack for yes. the winter? Uh, yeah, and we'll get to that. Sorry. <laughs> so you take a look at your travel duffel. You'll need enough stuff in there to last you four days. You know, when you get in the van, you'll be wearing clothes, I hope. So you need two more days worth of outbound clothes and stuff, and two days for on the way back. What if we're not wearing clothes? I mean, you're not so, getting in the van. Don't clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then you need to bring five days worth of clothes. You'll have to just take them out of your duffel and put it on. There you go. Mr. Beck, you go on. I'll take Mr. Sloss in the only place, but that confirmed it. Now, one thing that's been a complicating factor before has been the sleeping bag. So do not pack your sleeping bag in your backpack. Ideally, it should go in your travel duffel. But if your duffel isn't that big and it doesn't fit, that's okay have your sleeping bag loose with your name on it so it's easy to marry you up with your sleeping bag. But I don't want to be married to my sleeping bag. <laughs> you probably do We're going to have a special place for you in the van. It's going to be a short van. David, it's going to be a short van too. Now, this travel duffel will stay in the van while you're at camp. So, after you get to camp, you don't want anything in this duffel bag that you need at camp because you can't have it. It just stays in the duffel bag, and the duffel bag stays in the car. So you don't want anything in the duffel bag that after a week of sitting in the car in the sun turns into something disgusting. So oh, no, yeah, no, no, mold. no food or nasty stuff in the duffel bag. It's, it's just going to be there festering for a week. But clean clothes are just fine. And even the dirty clothes, if you stuff them back in a Ziploc bag and zip it up, they'll be just fine. <laughs> okay, item three, day pack. This you will have with you. Have it be small. Just have a few things in it, like a book, or maybe a book light if you need a book light, and your camera, and pen. I have my iPod. It's got a lot of videos. And you don't want a great big honking thing. This needs to be a little thing, because it's just you, your day pack, in one seat with one seat belt. You don't get nine seats to stretch out on. You get one seat with one seat belt, and there's going to be a guy next to you on that side, and a guy next to you on that side. So think small. Maybe you're behind you. There's going to be a camera out there. Then you're going to be in a party. So now, if you're going to bring electronic games or CD players or anything like that, 